Would you like to join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Nice job. I'll just stare at Virginia. Madam CAO. There are no modifications to the agenda this morning. But you. I'd entertain a motion. I move that we move the consent calendar forward for approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Let's say we have some public comment on it. Many items today. Good short day. We're going to be out of here in a few minutes. Um, I did wish to make a comment on item number six. It's the appointment of interim director of human resources. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but you reported out of closed session one time, and I don't know when this actually decision was made, other than maybe it was made in closed session when it got reported out. It wasn't reported out at that time, the decision had been made and it's being brought forward now. That's what I see possibly having happened, don't know. Um, I just was kind of watching. I always watch, you know, the reporting out, you know, on the, on the closed session so that I know if anything happened. And I, I don't recall that being reported out. The decision was made somewhere. So anyway, I just want to uh, acknowledge that it's been done. I think that's great. It says here, um, uh, point Kelly Barnes to position of Director of Human Resources on an interim basis and uh, starting July 29th. Um, hopefully you'll find somebody else to fill in eventually, or I, I don't know, maybe Kelly has a skill set you need to, to be uh, appointed permanently to the position. We do want to avoid what's happened before. And uh, I guess you had a resignation, and of course the public always is kind of curious when the resignation of uh, your prior director there, if that has strings, if it's a golden parachute, how a resignation happens if there were terms. So again, uh, uh, I'm sure now that this has been done, I'm sure that's open to uh, investigation for a public records request. So thank you for the opportunity to speak on this one today. Great, thank you. Um, anybody else? And with that, before we vote, I think Supervisor Fennell, yes. you have a proclamation for Mr. Richmond. Thank you very much, Chair Bone. So um, it gives me great pleasure to uh, read this proclamation, and hopefully we'll have at least um, a couple of people here to accept it. Whereas Humboldt County was named for Alexander von Humboldt, Enlightenment era scientific revolutionary and polymath whose explorations and writings directly inspired Darwin, Bolivar, Jefferson, Thoreau, and Muir, Whereas von Humboldt's legacy has resonated for generations around the globe, his discoveries and scientific rigor becoming building blocks for the natural sciences, climatology, ecology, habitat preservation, and humanitarian justice. And whereas his unifying vision of nature, including deep concern for native peoples, those held in bondage by imperial powers, and the negative effects of human activity on cultures and the natural world, and whereas von Humboldt's values are of great importance to Humboldt County as we strive to build sustainable communities locally and a vital earth worldwide. And whereas in many ways Humboldt County citizens manifest von Humboldt's basic concept that all living systems are interconnected and mutually dependent and in doing so highlight the human nature bond that thrives throughout the lands and communities of Humboldt County, making our county a magnet for new businesses, tourists, and scholars. And whereas von Humboldt's 250th birthday is September 14th, 2019, and whereas concurrent with worldwide celebrations, von Humboldt's 250th birthday will be marked locally by Planet Humboldt, a summit of inspiration a community collaboration at Eureka Sequoia Center sponsored by Arcata's Abundant Earth Foundation with support from Rotary District 5130 Special Projects, and whereas an essential quality of Humboldt County culture, 
the human nature bond infuses tradition, traditional and emerging businesses, agriculture, service efforts, government planning, education, and the arts, and will be a central element of Planet Humboldt. Now, therefore, the Humboldt County Board of Supervisors declares September 14th, 2019, Alexander von Humboldt Day in special recognition of his 250th birthday this year and to mark his birthday in years to come and encourages the citizens of Humboldt County to observe every September 14th as an opportunity to celebrate and further Humboldt County's leadership in manifesting the vision and inspiration of our namesake for more vibrant communities, deeper service to humanity, and an ever more verdant earth. And the proclamation has already been moved, so I'd like to present. Thanks to the Board of Supervisors for declaring September 14th Alexander von Humboldt Day and supporting the Abundant Earth Foundation, local Rotarians, and our many community partners in presenting Planet Humboldt, a summit of inspiration. The event features a resiliency fair providing tools and strategies for sustainability, an idea summit linking local, national, and international authorities through web conferencing, and an awards reception honoring local luminaries who have carried out von Humboldt's vision in their work and life, making our region a beacon of caring of the natural world. This caring is a tradition. When Albert Etter, renowned Southern Humboldt agronomist, saw the need to save a few redwood trees back in 1905, little did he know that his notion would eventually grow into Humboldt Redwood State and National Park. Little did Bob McKee know when he returned to Whitethorn in the late 50s that he would be a key to bring a vibrant and dedicated community to Humboldt. Little did David Simpson know when he was a digger feeding the hippies in the Haight-Asbury that he and his life partner Jane would move to Petrolia and become icons of international environmental action and political theater. These are some of the people and places featured at the Planet Humboldt event and sent to the world via the web. The long-term goal is to attract thousands to come here, not just for redwoods, rivers, or cannabis, but all of those and more, a place to learn, grow, and be inspired by the land and who we are. Our region faces many challenges. Back to the lander's concern for the environment has ironically morphed into disruptions for these same ones who called for environmental action in the first place. Changing coastlines will impact many homeowners and wide swaths of farmland. Wildfire is a constant threat. Underlying all of these is the stress and grief of creeping habitat loss. But as von Humboldt said, all systems are mutually dependent. The systems of the arts, commerce, government, academia, the native nations, the animals and rivers all thrive or die in a web of life that we mutually support with helping hands. Joining hands in a circle of caring and action makes the work joyously easier. Alexander von Humboldt was never here, but he would have been in his usual state of awe seeing our inspirational home. He would have seen generations working and caring for the land. He would have encouraged us loving, to lovingly embrace the inevitable changes wrought by time, for only by loving can we truly accept. Declaring his birthday is our day. We link our future to his legacy. The challenges are great. The love and spirit are deep. We can only hope that 250 years from now, our children's children's children will say about Alexander von Humboldt Day, little did they know. Finally, we need to thank Andrew Barnett, former president of the Garberville Rotary Club, for all his work to organize the Alexander von Humboldt Day. Thank you again for the proclamation. Thank you. It's always fun to 
hear how we got here and why we're named this. So, all right. With that, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Seeing none. Thank you. Okay. All right, we'll now have public comment on non-agenda items. Jeff? Good morning, supervisors, uh, county staff. Hey, I wanted to just bring up, uh, we don't have a full house, and that's actually great, because I'm here to talk to you folks. I um, wanted to talk about our infrastructure, um, and uh, about our direction as uh, Humboldt County, um, all the way in Humboldt County, not just here in Eureka. So I'm not really talking, I know uh, last week uh, the um, aqua fish farm thing came up and talking about giveaways and all the stuff I heard. I couldn't stay and speak on the subject last week. I had another meeting, but I really want you guys to consider um, what we're doing here as a county and if we don't have the infrastructure in place, we've had so many businesses come and want to open up shop here throughout the years, even before my time, and we don't have it here to facilitate these businesses. And if our county, um, meaning you folks, uh, would help uh, with our infrastructure and come together, I know we have some uh, stuff going on, but I mean, I think we need to look at it from a lot bigger picture, um, that if we invest, no matter how we do it, bonds, measures, however we get the money to do it, you're gonna get your monies back tenfold uh, in tax revenue here in the county, which we're gonna be able to, it's not just about the growth, it's really just about being sustainable here in Humboldt County and being, being able to have progress here in Humboldt County, be able to put our children to work here in Humboldt County. And uh, if, if, if we don't do anything at all and we, have these places come in or these businesses come in and all of a sudden it's like, well, uh, the infrastructure, infrastructure is not here. They're going to go other places. Uh, and it's the other places that are excelling um, revenue-wise, tax-base-wise, population-wise. Not that we want to grow our population uh, and ruin what we have here in Humboldt County, but we do want to grow. And we want to have sustainable growth. We want to have good jobs, good paying jobs for the community, for our grandkids, and I just hope you guys would consider um, thinking about how to do it. I'd be willing to, uh, I know we, there's lots of bonds money out there that we could do. There's some, even some SB1 extra uh, bond money out there that we could get. So I'd like to talk to you all about that at some point. So I thank you uh, for your time. And again, have a great day. Thank you. I'd like to know why we didn't have any SB1 money this year, too. Not yet. Yeah. We got some, a little bit. Well, that's the interesting thing is that as we as a county spend our bond money, and if we have to spend our credibility and things to do this, who gets most of the benefit? It's the state. <laughs> so definitely, they should be doing, what, what do we get, 13 or 17? What, a small amount of whatever is generated here stays here. The rest gets laundered and comes back, some of it back. Um, so this is our, our last meeting of the month. And then I believe, if I understand it, the next meeting on the schedule is the 20th, and then the 27th of next month. Um, so uh, in the meantime, we're going to have a, a Coastal Commission meeting coming up here. And I uh, highly recommend that uh, people take the opportunity to attend or you can stream it live. Um, I'm probably going to go speak if I have time during public comment. And uh, uh, a lot of what my grandson and I do is problem solving. Well, I saw a problem with how this works. I wanted to go down to a meeting down south to talk about what I refer to as the Trinidad Rancheria land grab right on the, on the public access there. And, and it was gonna cost me $2,000 and about three days worth of my time. So to solve this problem, I'm gonna request that they have staff look into maybe Skyping 
so that if we wish to participate in a meeting, rather than what I call venue shopping happening, where it's as far away from us as can be, where we can come down to our local office or a site, I guess there's probably, what, four or five districts, and so we can go there and have our input in a, in a, in a verbal and physical presence through uh, current technology. I think that's a pretty easy thing to ask for. I don't think it's out of line. I would promise not to use it on a very often basis, maybe only once a year if, if I could make the recommendation. Um, but I highly recommend people attend this meeting and uh, see what's local. Of course, uh, county-wise, it's all about cannabis. Uh, and that, that's fine, you know, it's, it's going through. And I did check with staff that was, that was a take it or leave it thing last meeting, you couldn't make any changes at all on that or it'd have to go back before the Coastal Commission. Um, I have a problem with the one project and I tried to think of how many buildings in Humboldt County are five stories or more. And I don't think I could come up with one for each of my 10 fingers. I've always felt um, size matters and in Humboldt County, small is beautiful. Uh, I don't like going down to L.A. and seeing all these big skyscrapers. Uh, I guess one of the tallest buildings is probably the Carson Mansion. Uh, to me, a little bit, that does represent a whole bunch of what happened to our woods around here as far as things going environmentally. But I like smaller projects. I like smaller business. I always liked being out in the trees when I was young, hanging out in the trees. And uh, I like trees to be the tallest thing around, not five-story story man-made buildings. So I will be speaking against that particular project. It does not make sense to me. And I wish other people who have like mine would show up and speak. Thank you for my opportunity to speak today. Thank you. Seeing no one else, I will close that part of the meeting. Are we going to go into closed session now? And we will be back at close after closed session to discuss the uh, rest of the agenda. So I will have Jefferson. County Council, read this in. Sure, just to be clear, are, are, is it just the one closed session or do you intend to do both? I think we're doing both. Yeah. Yep. A chair, it's the intent of the board to meet in closed session on two matters. A, first, a conference with legal counsel pursuant to government code 54956.9A1 in the matter of blank versus DiMatteo, DR190340. It's also the intent of the board to meet in closed session to consider the discipline, dismissal, or release of a public employee pursuant to government code 54954.5E and 54957B. All right. Take public comment on the closed session? Well, you have your county council's um, thing on there to discuss again. My understanding is winding its way through the court. Of course, then there's appeals and there's renegotiations and everything. Still recommend that you uh, try and settle that as soon as you can. Uh, court costs continue to go up. You have somebody on paid administrative leave. That continues to happen. And I don't know what the second item is. I don't know if that's basically to terminate uh, county council. I don't know if it's to terminate Amy or anybody else around. Uh, it's one of those vague things. You never know what, what it's all about. And uh, I guess you'll report out if some action's taken. Uh, on the other hand, I, I would say that, you know, be sure and always report out because I think that thing earlier I saw there, I never saw it reported out. And a decision was made somewhere. And that's always appreciated to be transparent. Appreciate acknowledging you're going to closed session on both items and getting that out of the way. And so uh, your time's certain out of here. And obviously there's no time certain back. Or, or do you have anybody have a rough estimate as far as how long I should twiddle my thumbs we until will, we come back. We will be back here within three minutes after the closed session is complete. That sounds like a reasonable assessment of the situation. Wouldn't expect anything more. Of course, if you come out three minutes beforehand, then I'm going to see that something's wrong with your closed session <laughs> policies and procedures and protocols. Thank you for my opportunity to speak on your closed session. We're back out of closed session, Jefferson. Yes, Chair. As to item one, there is no reportable action. As to item two, the board has approved a separation agreement and general release with Ms. DiMatteo. Thank you. And with that, I think we go to the appointment 
for the headwaters. Appointment to fill vacancy on the headwaters board. I guess I'll turn it over to the committee. I'll start. That's all right. Good. Thank you. The committee, appointment committee for uh, to recommend appointments for the headwaters board did meet a few times. Um, we reviewed uh, multiple uh, applications that came in. There was, I don't know, how many applications were there? Seven. I was, this was going to be my guess. We had seven applications. Uh, we reviewed them. Uh, we uh, had interviews with uh, two of the applicants. There were two uh, applications that were um, very well done and, and robust in their information and as well as uh, background. Um, and uh, after having the two interviews, we um, made a selection. And then uh, that's, that's basically the process that we went through. Um, lots of great. Uh, uh, experience, um, lots of great uh, uh, enthusiasm uh, on, uh, from from all participants, uh, and looking um, at the board and the direction uh, and, and and other things. Uh, this is the selection we came up with, and so I'm going to let uh, Mr. Spain take it from here. Unless no. So yeah. tell me, Amy, what happens next? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I'll let Amy take it from here. Yeah, let let Amy take it from here. So, uh, the headwaters um, subcommittee is made up of Supervisor Wilson, Supervisor Madrone, and the Treasurer Tax Collector uh, John Bartholomew. And so today, that committee is making a recommendation to appoint uh, Jennifer Katsos or Jenna, as she's she likes to be called. And that essentially concludes that staff report, and that it is now uh, up to your board to um, discuss or or make a motion. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I will also point out that the uh, uh, decision was unanimous uh, by the voting members, which were the three electeds. But we also took input from a uh, county uh, administrative officer as well as. Uh, the headwaters uh, director, and it was a unanimous decision pretty much across the board. Um, I think that uh, Jenna is going to bring uh, a lot of great energy to this board uh, with some uh, increased diversity and a lot of uh, enthusiasm for hard work and getting these funds out to our community to do some good work and creating jobs. So it was a, for me, it was my first time doing this, and it was a, a good process. I, I felt really good about the outcome. Supervisor Bass. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And when you mentioned the three electeds, um, I'm hearing that uh, our treasurer, tax collector, was one of them. That's good. I was curious if we could ask him up and if he had some thoughts he might want to share. Or not. Sorry, John, I didn't warn you. That's what happens when you come in the room. Chair Bone, fellow supervisors, and Supervisor Bass in particular, uh, John Bartholomew, treasurer, tax collector, and I have been a participant in the Headwaters Board Selection uh, team for a number of years, and it, I think the, this process this year was uh, probably one of the more satisfying uh, processes that I've had uh, over time, just because uh, the, in the previous years, we have interviewed so many people, and it, it gets, uh, confusing and convoluted and you could go in so many different directions and this year what happened is that we had a number of repeat applications and um, for various reasons we decided not to uh, interview these other folks because we'd already done it and we had uh, documentation from those previous interviews and uh, the interviewees that we did this year were both highly qualified and they both had a lot of strengths. They're, neither one of them uh, uh, should feel badly about being not being selected because they were at the top of the list for, for very strong reasons. Uh, but due to the makeup of the board at present, uh, adding Jenna to me makes a whole lot of sense 
just to add a bit more diversification and add a, a, a younger perspective to that part of the board. Uh, uh, Buzz Webb is termed out, so he is going to be replaced by Jenna, and I think this makes great sense. Jenna brings a lot of energy that uh, uh, is, is not always present on the board, and I think that she will add uh, a nice aspect to the board going forward with a different perspective on interacting with new developing businesses in Humboldt County. Through the chair, I just make a follow-up question. Yeah, please. So you, actually, you touched on a point I was going to ask earlier. Is um, You said a lot of the folks had already gone through the process or applied, and I, I think there's at least two that hadn't. So I was kind of curious whether it was you or the others to ask, how did you decide who actually to, to um, um, interview? Because that question came up. And um, since you mentioned it, I thought I'd just follow up with you. I guess it, one should be aware of what they're saying at the time they're speaking it, huh? Uh, the, and this has happened in previous uh, Headwaters interviews in that we brought back the same people that have interviewed in previous years and, and they, there are, there's a lot of interest in being on a Headwaters board in, in a number of members of the community, which is fantastic. And while all of them have, bring different qualities and different experiences to the board, it, we have to weigh uh, what the current makeup of the board is with those individuals and we are familiar with them from previous experience and previous uh, years of interviews with them and we've uh, appointed them, not we, but we've made recommendations for their appointments. And um, I think that as, as time goes on and as Humboldt County changes, we need to change with the time, so to speak. And I think that uh, the people that we decided not to interview this year uh, may have been uh, more viable candidates in previous times when they've interviewed, and that's why that we went through a, a more rigorous interview process, which included them. But um, due to that past experience and with the, the changing times in Humboldt County, I think that Jenna, in this case, is the prime con candidate, and as Supervisor Madrone and Wilson also mentioned it was a unanimous vote, right. and uh, I do not have any qualms about Jenna becoming part of the board. Yeah, and also to the chair, I just wanted to finish. It's no, I think um, one thing I like that Jenna brings is the arts aspect, and I know throughout the country, arts and economic development. I mean, all the conferences I go to, there's something that's, you know, brought up about that. So I, I understand that. I think I have more of the heartburn because um, I know at least I mean. I encouraged uh, Eddie Morgan to put his name in. I don't think Eddie had ever applied before, and maybe I'm wrong. So to hear that the others weren't um, interviewed because they had already been interviewed in the past still wasn't ringing right with me. I mean, and I don't, I'm not on the committee. If I was on the committee, then I think I would have more to say about it. It just, um, I had been asked, and so I was trying to find out. So like I said, I wasn't here, and I, I appreciate the work of the committee, as well as you, to uh, go through the process. I was just trying to define it. Yeah, and um, those interviews, uh, the uh, the uh, resumes of all the applicants were very detailed. And to uh, tell you the truth, I don't remember all the particulars about Mr. Morgan, so I, I can't s address that specifically, and I wouldn't. Uh, but um, again, all the applicants were very strong, and they bring a lot of experience and. Uh, uh, knowledge to the board or they would but uh, it's our job to determine or try to determine who the best person is for the current board makeup and that's why we and no argument i just had the problem with everyone who's interviewed before that's the only argument i have and it's don't no need to continue i just wanted to find out and you 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 answered yeah and yeah i was probably along the same lines that we interviewed less than 30% of the applicants that applied. And so, I, and I, two things I've got that she, and I, I don't have a problem with the, I do have a problem that not everybody got interviewed because I've been on that committee and I'm sorry it was so long and tedious about doing that. But I think if people apply, they need to at least get the avenue of, you know, the, the choice. Um, Eddie, you know, like she said, I was one of the ones that thought Eddie was a good, you know, combat veteran, owns a business in Old Town. But 
you said that she fits best where the board is going and where Humboldt County is going. And I'm at a loss. Maybe I'm a, maybe I'm a dinosaur. I just, where are we going and where is the board going? Maybe I misunderstood something there. And again, because I, we've got I, Elizabeth Cameron, who's pretty young. She's real young. And Diana Rios would like to think, you know, I think she's still fairly young. So the diversity I thought was here and we keep hearing that we need more diversity. I just want to know why I'm just I'm not don't have a problem with the choice. I'm just having a problem with why people that didn't get interviewed. I, I like the new perspective, and the best way to get new perspective is to the two people that were here have probably been in the county. I think I'd like both to, less I'd than like six to years. That so. question, if I may, from my perspective, we re looked and reviewed the applications. There were two standout applications that did a really good job in their application. Like they were professionally put together. They were detailed. They had all the qualifications. They stood out in the application process. And from that, didn't we? Did, I personally didn't, you know, look at whether they had applied before. I looked at the applications, and there were two that were very stand out in that in that process. And that's where we started from. And I would say that the that um, we can say or talk about. Uh, the representation on the board and those sorts of things, and that is meaningful. But the the choice of Jenna, her application was stellar. Her interview was great. I mean, and uh, and we had another good interview as well. But I'm just saying, we you know, when you combine those two things together, that generally takes you to the top. The other things that bring uh, this person's qualifications to the fore isn't just the connectivity with the arts community, it's actually the, it's the, uh, that's why I'm trying to put it into words, it's the interface and interaction this person has within the community, not just the arts community, but the small business community as well, and I think that those things are what brought this person to the fore in terms of their qualifications, and I just wanna make sure that that's said clearly that you know we really did do a robust process of reviewing um, the applications and having an interview um, that's what I want that's all I have to say on this and I'd like to thank Supervisor Wilson for helping dig me out of the hole I was getting myself into uh, because uh, his comments are right on regarding the process that we was used there were certain applications that <clears throat> were much more in depth than than a few of the other ones so uh, that it was part of that process too. You got two of us again. Yeah, panel, please. So I I don't want to take away from uh, uh, Jenna's um, appointment. I I think that uh, Jenna's a wonderful candidate, and I really do appreciate the uh, the fact that we're looking more and more at the arts. But I do, I did hear from one of the applicants that uh, they had not been interviewed and they really did not feel good about that. And I wonder what the process was in terms of letting people know we're not going to interview you, you're done, because um, in this particular individual uh, basically said it's a mystery to me, I don't know what happened. And so I think that if that is the the course to take, it's important to know that when people put their name out there, uh, they, respect, they, they expect some respect. And I also, you know, want to keep really clear on the mission of the Headwaters Fund. That shouldn't drift. I mean, the mission is stated clearly on what, when, what the Headwaters was designed for. So I, I, I think maybe, John, you're feeling a little picked on here with all the, the to talk, uh, because you're talking freely, but it is kind of, it is exposing a little bit of, of what I consider, at least from the individual I spoke with, somewhat of a hurt feeling for stepping up and not really feeling respected. And I, I appreciate those comments, Supervisor Fennell, and uh, my anticipation was when I went into the board, the Headwaters Board Committee meeting that we were going to be interviewing all the candidates. That was my anticipation, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure how that 
got narrowed down uh, within the conversation, but, but that's the direction that uh, the committee took. And um, I, I do feel for the applicants that were not interviewed, because I would feel the same way. So, so maybe that is, it, that is something that we should uh, consider next time and make sure that we do interview everyone so that they are treated it fairly from their perspective and our perspective also because, uh, again, we did not interview all the applicants again this time. So. And if I might suggest, I mean, it might be that somebody writes in an application that clearly does not reflect an understanding of headwaters or, or, or and, and clearly f reflects an, uh, somebody who is not really a good candidate, at least um, contact them and say, you know, maybe you didn't understand what the mission is. Uh, so that kind of thing. I don't know. I don't know how to mention it. I've been on the board, my, the, the committee myself, and part of the decision to appoint Elizabeth. I think she's doing well, and Diana as well. So I'm happy about all of that. Be great to have Jenna, but I just think it's good to have this conversation. Oops. I, I totally agree, and uh, again, I, I, in hindsight, I think that uh, all the applicants should be interviewed going forward just to uh, make sure that they feel uh, appreciated for stepping up to the plate and putting their name out there to, to be part of the board. And so uh, I, I, I agree with that perspective and, and sentiment. And, um, but all that said and done, I do feel total confidence that we selected an appropriate person in Jenna for the board. Thank Supervisor you. Bess. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And yeah, I don't want Jenna um, to get lost in this whole conversation. I think it's more about process is more, and, and it wasn't just the arts that I thought was interesting. I mean, I, the next gen, I'm very, I agree that those two applications were the most complete. Um, one was really long, it was so complete. And, uh, but I think Supervisor Fennell hit on it, um, just uh, was nobody knew where it was in the process, because I actually, in the meantime, um, well, let's say Eddie, because I put, he's now on, I think he's going on my, on the Human Rights Commission. But I'd asked them, I said, hey, you know, have you heard about Headwaters and what are you doing? Because we don't even know what's going on. And it was like, I don't know, I think I fell into a black hole and I have no idea. So perhaps even if we don't, if people clearly don't meet the criteria, at least call uh, or at least inform. And I think that was more to the point of what I was hearing from, you know, that. So, no, I, but I, so I, let's, I, it's more about the process. And... I wasn't on the committee and I'm not involved in the process, so I think it's just something we can always morph a little bit. See ya. So I appreciate that feedback and staff can definitely work on keeping people more informed on the process. So our apologies to those who didn't feel included in the process and, and in the future we'll work on making sure they're, they're m notified of, this, of, of where we're at in the process. So we can, we can work on that. And I don't want uh, just staff and John to fall on their swords. We're, we're all, we all own uh, that responsibility, and I accept that criticism, and I think it's reasonable. And um, yeah, if, if we continue um, being on this committee next time or whatever, then uh, we'll definitely make sure that that's not repeated. So, I don't, thank you. And I don't think it's criticism. I think it's just an overall appearance. Because for me, um, two people out of seven, and I looked at some of the other ones, and the problem is, is we're, we're asking, we have 35 commissions, I think, 35, 36 commissions, we ask people to apply for, and if I ask somebody to apply, or I put out there, if you don't put out a, if you don't do an elaborate, you're not gonna get interviewed, I think. Um, and Jenna, I was great, great to see that her interview went really well, but when there's only two people being interviewed, and not seven, or you know, even if you want to kick out two of them, there were some pretty good applications with pretty good qualifications. And I, again, I support Jenna 100%, but I think we fall down to the public because we're asking people to fill out an application, take six to 10 hours a month out of their lives, and oh, by the way, we're not gonna pay you diddly. So I think if you want them to spend four hours to do an application and make an elaborate and still not getting interviewed, 
for whatever or whatever the case may be. I think the idea is there should have been a little bit more, and I appreciate the CAO stepping up because getting the phone call going, have you heard anything? Have you heard anything? Um, I think just doesn't do, uh, I think it does a disservice to Jenna because I think she might have risen to the top anyway. But when you, when only two horses race out of the seven that were entered, there's no show or anything then. So that's the only thing I'm thinking. So, so Rosemary Madron. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, I too appreciate the, uh, the input uh, from my colleagues. Uh, it's been well heard and as a new member, uh, I'm learning. Uh, but I do very much appreciate that input and all of the applicants, uh, which we did uh, review their applications. And with that, I would move that we appoint uh, Jennifer Katzos to fill the vacant seat on the Headwaters Fund Board. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Do we have any public comment on this? And then I'll come back to you, Estelle. Well, I like the idea of a whole bunch of people falling on swords, but that doesn't really seem to fix the situation we're in right now. Um, uh, I'm big on policies, procedures, and protocols. I like consistency. The message that's being sent out to all of these people who do put their names in the hat and not to be treated on an equal basis is a real big problem. It's a problem for me and a problem for you asking people to come forward. Um, I believe, as far as reviewing goes, that this Steve Madrone hadn't interviewed any of the other people that were their priors. So I would think, you know, that the committee would want to have had that. Maybe Mike interviewed one or two of them, having been on the committee before. Don't know. Maybe he hadn't. In so these people had only been interviewed by, by John here. Um, and I appreciate, you know, John's input on things. But it, I would step back and I would ask that this, this there's no hurry step back and ask that these people given the chance for an interview here and uh, uh, and follow the thing. And the, it may be the same end result, and that's great, but then there is no cloud, there's no perception that maybe somebody had a personal relationship with somebody who's being put onto this board. Um, and it's just, it's just it's sad to see this message sent. And I'm asking, this was just a recommendation to you folks. I mean, this some people are acting like it's a done deal. No, it's a recommendation, you have a motion. Um, I would ask that this be, uh, that you consider uh, asking this to go back to committee and give the people a chance here. We, this, it's not too late to unwind where we're at right now. It's not going to hurt the process. In fact, it's going to help the process. It's going to encourage all the people that you solicit. There were a lot of good candidates. I went, I went through that list and there wasn't just, I didn't just see two people. I saw quite a few names. The other big problem I have here is some people are not good at filling out these applications. And that's why the face-to-face -face time is when you really are able to find out and get your questions answered. Without going through that part of the process, your, your best candidates possibly uh, won't be put in the chair. So again, I, I, I have a, quite a bit of angst regarding moving forward with this. Probably it'll go forward. Uh, but there, there's a tendency to make a mistake once and just say, well, this one's done, so it's in the books and not undo the mistake. So I'm, I'm recommending, you know, I don't know what the rest of the procedure will be here, whether normally you would rate the people is what you normally would do for something, a position like this. I don't know whether you were gonna go through it, other names were gonna be brought forward and see where a vote shakes out. I mean, that's your chances to make your comments now regarding people that you might wanna have on there. And I'd like to see that, that, that chance of maybe taking any cloud off of this, gone through on that kind of a procedure where you go ahead and ra rate your first and second and see where we go. Thank you. Seeing no one else, I will um, um, Thank you. close the uh, public comment. Um, Supervisor Fiddle. I, I, just want to, I just want to reiterate um, that uh, I do think that uh, Jenna will make a wonderful addition to the board. Um, I would also um, call attention to the fact that there's another term uh, coming up on, uh, in 2020. Um, that is, um, uh, Greg Seiler will be termed out. So what I would hope out of this process is that those who are interested in serving um, will be assured that the process will be a bit more inclusive and, uh, and thorough in the next time around. 
and would not be uh, discouraged from offering their services in the future. And with that, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, with that, we are going to go back into closed session. No, we did it. We're done. We are going back into closed session. Thank you. Thank you. Um, regarding an earlier matter that was. Um, I'm just going by my note. Well, I, Do both I, I, attorneys concur that it's? I, I, I would take the, it's already reported out, so that matter is. All right. Included. With that, we're adjourned.